Hello and welcome to the Game Changer series of interviews for Global Entrepreneurship Week in partnership with Business Cloud. I'm delighted today to have with me Vincent from Magnific. And Vincent, you have done some incredible work around growth hacking and really raised the profile of that both in the UK and the US and do a lot to support people who are starting out to build their audiences quickly. So I'm delighted to have you here. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what growth hacking is and how you came to growth hacking and discovered this is where your zone of genius lies? So three years ago, I was on welfare and benefits pretty much until the day I was given a check for a quarter million dollars to uh, take Planet Ivy uh, bigger than it was before. Um, so how did I get to that stage? Um, I growth hacked my way from zero to 300,000 visitors a month on my online magazine, Planet Ivy. Um, so growth hacking is doing a lot with very little. It's the reason Snapchat, Tumblr, Instagram can grow absolutely massive with no traditional marketing spend. So it's a way of using specific skills in order to get in front of a lot of people in a short space of time, either paid or unpaid. So unpaid to begin with and then paid as you scale up. Mm -hmm. And Obviously, we've seen the rise of social media over, I'd say, probably the last 10 years. It's become prolific. The barriers have started to come down. People are engaging with it more. What are the things that you find businesses really need to think about, or even when it's just starting in somebody's bedroom? What are the key ingredients that they really need to begin to identify an audience and capture their attention? So the first step is you really need to go real life and find them if humanly possible. Um, there's no better way of finding out what their needs and wants are than by going out and getting them. So go on Meetup and Eventbrite and look at all the uh, meetups that are happening. Go there, arrive early and uh, do the networking before and after. Um, as a way of just quizzing people. Remember, don't say, I have an idea, because people will always say, oh, that idea sounds good. Um, you want to say, my friend has an idea, I don't know if it's any good, and then start there. Or even better than that, start by asking them what problems they have um, and how they currently solve those problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So be curious and, I guess, be observant as well. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, it's really a case of having an outgoing, confident mindset in growth hacking, not just in speaking to users, but in everything you do. Um, it's not natural to ask for sales. It's not natural to go out there and market. Um, it's so important that you find a way of gaining confidence to do these tasks, or it doesn't matter what I tell you in my book or anything like that. Mm. It's got to be translated to the ability to do and to take action. And I think for a lot of people, they see those that are running successful businesses, successful entrepreneurs, and it's kind of almost the new what people want to do. Um, and I think that there's something about people needing to understand that actually there is a, a line of discomfort that we sometimes have to step over in order to take things public, in order to share ideas and to speak about them. Um, how have you found that, obviously, from, from where you've come from and where you've got to? How do you build up that confidence muscle? Well, the only answer is really to do it over and over, mm -hmm. which is probably the obvious answer. But how do you do that? Well, you force yourself to have deadlines. You force yourself to have meetings. You tell people this will be done by a certain date. Deadlines are the only reason anything in human history has got completed. So if you promise something to someone else, if you promise you'll do something, uh, if you make public declarations that you're definitely going to do something by a certain time, this forces you to it. Um, you will always find a way to procrastinate. And what's devilish about procrastination is um, it hits you hardest with the things that you really need to do, but that are also scary. 
Uh, you still do them at the last minute, so why not move that last minute forward? Mm -hmm. Like Peter Thiel says, think about what you can do in the next 10 years, then reconsider how it could all be finished in the next six months. And that really blows your brain open. Uh, Tim Ferriss was, uh, was saying something about this recently. Um, so it's really important that you continually challenge your brain and see what your limit is. And it's always, you know, 40% more than you think. 40%? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when are you yeah. going to crank that up to 50 then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Well, we're, we're starting with people at the start of their journey. Maybe over time you can get to 50. Yeah. I, I always think it's one of those things. It's one of the things that fascinated me is I think, you know, we, we use maybe 10%, if that, of the capabilities that we have um, with our intelligence, with our minds. Um, and how how do we begin to go a bit deeper, begin to use that extra edge and work with things that are slightly below the surface you know most people won't do 90 percent of the things i guess that they think of because they're perhaps fearful of being judged or whether other people are going to like them but actually stepping over that line and doing the things that we're not comfortable with it's often when you do that bit extra that you see the greatest rewards um so back to the growth hacking um if you were a complete beginner today, what would you do mm -hmm. first? Um, I would find where your audience is and then find out what platforms they're using. For instance, if they were using Instagram, I would use Instagress in order to get my basic following up. So that will target your users by location and keywords and the other posts that they like. Um, and then from there, you can start to look at other platforms. Uh, if they were on Twitter, I guess, to scrape people's bios to find people who are influential in the space or potential customers, I would then follow those people and then I would um, start speaking to the ones who follow back. And this can all be done once you have a system uh, it can all be sent out to an intern. Um, if I was wanting to build a community or a coaching business, um, I would create a Facebook group invite all of my friends in to begin with and then have incentives to bring other people into the group so uh, a free consulting call or a free piece of copy if they invite 10 people in and then I would use that Facebook group post into it to show my expertise build my tribe and then upsell a percentage of those into a, you know a coaching plan or whatever it is you're doing uh, if you're building a startup um, that can be your CRM the Facebook group for customer complaints for polls to find out how people feel about certain features. Um, I would make sure my personal Facebook is my professional Facebook, because that's where you build your 1,000 true fans, your network when you want to launch things. Mm -hmm. um, and if I was selling, I would also begin public speaking. Mm -hmm. Public speaking, I think, makes an incredible difference to profile and to how you're perceived as well it makes networking a lot faster and simpler because you're already positioned well for having the expertise on on topics um how long did it take you to decide to incorporate public speaking into your marketing mix so um i was asked to give a talk in april 2015 and then as soon as i did people in the audience were like I was really good, uh, I wanted to coach me, do you want to consult my company? I realized that's the way I can get deal flow in, so I went on Meetup and Eventbrite, I looked at every local Meetup, and I sent them all the same message, I have a massive network I can invite if I can speak at your talk, you know, I didn't have a network but I didn't check, and then, yeah, I sent that to everyone, one, about one in four got me back, and then I scaled that out to America, and then started booking tours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's important, isn't it? I mean, you say one in four people came back. And so that's that's 25 percent. Seventy five percent didn't. But actually, that is a really good rate for that type of thing. And a lot of people would focus on the 75 percent that didn't rather than the ones that do. And I think there's a real thing there to engage with the people that are interested. Yeah, and uh, the thing of growth hacking is 
if you are um, trying to get 100 meetings, face-to-face -face coffee meetings, and only 25 came through, that would be, you know, a big effort. That would be weeks of work. But we're talking about sending 50 messages on Meetup or 100 messages on Eventbrite. Um, so it doesn't take much to reach a hell of a lot of people. That's what's so amazing about growth hacking. Mm. Um, and you just forget it. You, you don't even realize that people aren't replying, and you can always follow up with them anyway. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's about being really, really strategic about your choices and how to have the maximum impact most quickly, if, if quick is your objective, if depth is your objective, you might deploy slightly different strategies on how to do that with people. But, I mean, mo most meetings are generally, you're looking at 100 people average. So yeah. to be in that position and have those people speaking about you, particularly now that, you know, most in-person meetings that you go to where it's a talk, you know, People are using hashtags, they're following the event, and that's actually, again, where a lot of good connections are made to extend things. So um, what would be the three words, just to keep it really succinct for people, mm -hmm. three words that would sum up your best advice? If you for people who into growth hacking, huh. <laughs> um, be fearlessly aggressive. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. And so explain to people being fearlessly aggressive. What does that mean for you? So you need to be able to take people saying no. Um, mm -hmm. And with growth hacking, you need to try a lot of things. So mm -hmm. it could be that your Facebook ads don't convert for a long time, but you know you aggressively keep at it. It could be that people are saying no to your sales, so you have to change your product or your pitch. Um, it could be any number of things, um, but you have to keep going, and it's really only scale which gets you there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And tell us about some of the campaigns that you've been running recently and some of the things that you're enjoying most with what you're doing. So my main project right now is building a Facebook group. It's called Traffic and Copy. Um, mm -hmm. and I believe Facebook is the future of community, so I have put all of my resources into creating that rather than being across multiple platforms right now. Um, so it's a little over three months old. Yeah. It has you know, 8,200 members, super high engagement, and it's been an amazing exercise in how to grow a community around ideas, around growth hacking, um, and that's really going to be a massive asset when I launch products. It's amazing. I'm learning a lot and making lots of contacts. Uh, people are getting deals out of it. People are finding jobs out of it. So that's like the main project I'm working on. Uh, this year, my book has just passed $100,000 in pre-orders, uh, Secret Source, a step-by-step -step guide to growth hacking. Um, there wasn't any practical guides of like, this is how you do SEO, this is how you do social media, this is how you do content marketing. So me and Austin Allred wrote one, and it's kind of been quite easy to get all those sales because uh, even in a crowded market, if everyone else's stuff sucks, um, it's quite easy to stand out. Um, and it's not that their stuff is irrelevant. Uh, certainly, if you run an agency and you have budgets for Facebook ads, most of the other guides are great for that. But um, they neglect the people starting out, uh, possibly some of the people listening to this. Um, they neglect the people starting out who have zero or smaller budgets. Uh, and we started with that market in mind, and it's applicable to uh, more mature businesses too. But by starting with that, where no one else was really looking, um, we had a massive advantage as we knew what our audience wanted. Mm -hmm. And in creating that value for the audience by giving them what they want, that is the thing that you give them in exchange and I, I see that loyalty almost comes back because the value is being created because it's solid advice because it's very direct mm. and I think sometimes businesses when they're innovating can be a little bit fearful about actually sharing what works whereas yeah. actually what I see here is a real openness and I was discussing at one of the other interviews today um, another business that I work with is, again, similar kind of thing, taking open source approaches almost to the ideas and collaboration that they're doing. 
and for me it feels like that is the way that business is going that is the future almost towards a almost an, an anti-intellectual property thing you've still got first move yeah. advantage of course but um the ability to share and create value for people because ultimately the goal is surely for more people to be doing things for themselves and to bring forward and create better ideas that solve better and bigger problems yeah so we absolutely have um, given all our secrets away in the book that's what I do in secret source um, in the traffic and copy group um, yeah it, it is a real change um, I think it's, it's it's hard for Generation X people to understand that the age of privacy is over mm. um, and the age of secrecy is over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just in closing, um, what would be your message to people that are really at that point where they need to really make that decision? about where they're taking their business, how they're going to grow it. What what do you think they really need to think about and focus on, particularly moving forward over the next two to three years? So they have to be learning. I, I think it's really underrated that you have to learn throughout learning your business. The mm -hmm. traditional mindset is you learn before you start and then you get your head down and you don't do anything but execute. And I believe it's important to keep a tab on uh, new ways of marketing, um, of new ways of meeting the customer where they want to be met. Um, so I think learning is really underrated. Learning from my Facebook group, from heavier tomes like Dan Kennedy stuff, um, mm -hmm. I think that's something that you need to do over the long term. Mm -hmm. um, any productivity. No caffeine, no alcohol, no going out, um, eating better, exercising every day, sleeping well, uh, taking supplements. All of these things give you that slight edge that we were talking about earlier. So mm -hmm. it's so essential that um, you give yourself every advantage as well as throwing all of these hours at it. I think that's a really important point because a lot of people do think success comes from putting in the hours. And mm. whilst that's a factor of it, you've got to have the stamina to be able to keep going, which does mean actually putting yourself first in terms of your physical needs for rest, recuperation, stimulation, creativity. All of those things are not going to happen if you're burning yourself out. Yeah, I think it's really underrated, all of these little things that... Um, happen when you are in the right mindset mm -hmm. yeah like it, it's not just you know being better at email or not going on Facebook so much yeah. Um, it's yeah there, there's yeah, I've hesitated for years to give advice on productivity because it's so different for every person mm. um, but I, I've gotten to a somewhat productive state now but it really depends on your body chemistry I, you know I hired uh, and I hire a nutritionalist and personal trainer to work with me Mm -hmm. uh, because everyone's different. That's why productivity advice is kind of uh, useless because everyone's body has a different chemistry. But um, yeah, so I'm definitely a big fan of hiring coaches in every area you want to improve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So um, yeah, I think it's um, been really, really interesting to hear that because a lot of people do think and do struggle with the fact of They've got to be the figurehead. They've got to do it on their own. But actually, there's always somebody a few steps ahead that's going to know more than you, that's going to be able to give that advice or help you access what that extra edge is going to be. And you're right, they're going to be in different specialisms. There's not going to be one person that's going to fix every aspect and the one person that's going to move you forward in terms of change is probably yourself and getting that mindset piece right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. And where can people go, Vincent, to find out more about what you're doing? Obviously, you've mentioned the Facebook group. Where else are the best points of contact for you? 
So, um, yeah, you can add me on Facebook, Vincent Digman. That's my main platform. Uh, traffic and copy is probably the place you'll get the most good stuff, though. Um, mm -hmm. My Facebook group, uh, I have a website, vincentdignan.com, with some of my blog posts and contact on it. And I'm on Twitter, to Vincent Digman. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you very, very much. And I'm sure that everybody that listens to this is going to get tremendous value and even more so if um, to the people that are listening, if you actually follow up, go and join some of those groups, go and observe what's going on and um, be curious and take some risks. But thank you very much, Vincent, for agreeing to do this. Great. OK, thank you. Thank you.